Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. Uh, to discuss further into the laboratory project on Taylor polynomials. Now look at question five, which looks at a derivation or an explanation of the Taylor polynomials. So make sure to watch my earlier videos on questions one, two, three, and four, in which I uh, went over a recap on linear approximation. Then I went over a uh, better approximation using a quadratic function or a quadratic approximation like this over there. Showed that it's better in questions one and two, and I went over the accuracy on question two. And then question three, I went over a different form of the quadratic approximation using this x minus a method uh, instead and then uh, basically show that it's uh, it's better aligned with the derivatives over there and then went over an example on question four using it and basically question three is this form right here is the basis for Taylor polynomials of even higher order than just a quadratic function so let's just jump right into question five so question five states instead of being satisfied with a linear or quadratic function to a uh, quadratic approximation to f of x near x equals a, let's try to find better approximations with higher degree polynomials. And then basically we look for an nth degree polynomial right here and we'll call that with a t because that's a uh, name for the Taylor polynomials. So t, uh, t of n, I mean t n of x equals to c0 plus c1, these are all just constants, times x minus a plus c2 x minus a squared plus c3 x minus a cubed and so on all the way to the nth constant right there cn and then x minus a to the power of n. So, and then basically we're going to look for this such that tn uh, and its first uh, n derivatives have the same values at x equals a as f and its first n derivatives. So basically the values and its derivatives have are all the same at x equals a and that is uh, as I was going over in question one and so on using these conditions right here but now we're just expanding it further making all of the derivatives equal at x equals a so let's just jump back in here and read further and then basically by dif differentiating repeatedly and setting uh, setting x equals a show that these conditions are satisfied if c0 is equal to fa, c1 equals to f prime of a, then c2 equals uh, one half f double prime of a, and in general, basically for the general derivative you're gonna take, ck equals to the de derivative, the kth derivative of f at a, and then divided by k factorial, where recall my early videos, a k factorial is just gonna be one, two, one times two times three times four all the way till times by k, and, and I'll put a link in the description below for my factorials video, so make sure to watch those. And then basically what the resulting uh, polynomial will get, so this is just in general the constant, plug those in, we'll get here, so that from here to here is our, uh, the, this is our quadratic, from here to here is our linear, so this is linear, this is our quadratic, and then here it, as you keep going more and more you just get a general Taylor polynomial that looks like this tn, tn of x equals fa plus f prime of a times x minus a and so on. Then you have all the way over here f of n, uh, I mean f, the, the nth derivative of f at a times by x minus a to the power of n all divided by n, uh, n factorial. So this is called the nth, ta nth degree Taylor polynomial of f centered at uh, a. So now what we're asked to do is show that these conditions are satisfied. And basically in general just show this. This is what we want to find. So let's look at that. So that was a mouthful, I just read all that. So now solution is basically solve for those constants. So we're gonna have to solve for the constant Z, C0, C1, C2, and then etc. all the way to Cn or uh, put one in, just in between in general. So we'll have a C K in general, it keeps going on and on, and then all the way till C N. So it's just C K is just anything, uh, any number there. And those are again these constants there. And then, yeah, basically we use those constants and we want T N of X. So to approximate the function F of X near X equals to A, 
And then as in question one with, and question three, uh, with conditions, so we want this, and I just move that over and just write, we want, so we want uh, tn, of, tn of x, the function there, uh, approximates f of x near x equals a with conditions, and the conditions are we want the value at a of this approximation equals to the function at a, and also we want the derivative as well equals to the derivative. So the approximation and the function will have to both equal each other. And then same for the second derivative, t uh, double prime of a equals to f. Uh, double prime of a like that and so on keeps going on and on and we want all of them like that so then the nth derivative as well so all of the derivatives have to be equal to the function value at x equals a so what we'll do here then is well let's just write our approximation in this form so we have tn of x is equal to the constant c0 plus now we're gonna have uh, c1 and then x minus a plus c2, the second or the third constant there, because c0 is the first one, x minus a squared, and then plus, I'll just go add another one, c3, x minus a3, and then plus all the way we keep going on and on up to n, so like this, x minus a to the power of n, like that. So that's what we have there, but now what we'll do is, well, let's just plug in, because we need to have tn of a equals f of a like that. So what we'll do is, well, tn of a, just plug in a in there. And again, the reason we use these x minus a is when you plug it in, these all vanish. So this all goes to zero when you plug it in. Uh, all goes to zero everywhere. So what we end up getting is, and all of these will go to zero, this just becomes c0 equals the first constant. Again, we need it to equal to this f of a. So then uh, c0 equals to f of a. So that is our first constant there. And now the next one is, well, we'll just take the derivative. Tn prime of x equals to, well, this goes to 0 as a constant. Here this goes to 1. We have c1. And then the derivative over there is going to be 2. c2, bring that down, and then x minus a, like that. And then this one here, the, yeah, the 3 comes down. So now you're understanding why we're going to use factorials, because well, every time you go further and further you get a higher power coming down so now we have a 3 c3 x minus a and now we subtract 1 so uh, 3 minus 1 is 2 plus keep going on and on and then put the n down we get n times cn x minus a and then the derivative we have to subtract 1 like that so that's what we have so far and now again we need to have the derivative equals to uh, at the function there at the, the derivative of the function there at x equals a. So what we have here is plug in a. And again, these all, all vanish goes to zero. This just becomes c1. And again, we need to uh, set this equal to f prime of a. So then this is our second constant. The c1 equals to f prime of a, like that. And now we take derivative again until we find a pattern. So notice what we have here, take the second derivative, this goes to zero, this gets a two now. Two, c two, that's derivative chain rule, that's just x minus a derivative is just one. And then bring this two down, so we get now a two times three, times by c three, x minus a, and then just subtract ones like that. Keep going on and on, bring this n, one, n minus one down, take the derivative, so n minus one times n, c n, x, minus a, and then n minus 2, like that, so we subtract 1. So then now again, same thing, we want the second derivative equal to the function's second derivative at x equals a. So what we'll do, we'll do is just solve for uh, t uh, double, double prime of a. So yeah, now when we plug this inside, all those vanish, this just becomes, yeah, it just becomes, well, this 2c2, 2c2, and again, this has to be equal to the second derivative over there at a. So now we need to uh, just rearrange this, so then we get a, just divide the two out, so we get c2 equals to f double prime, or the second derivative of f uh, at a divided by two. So there is our second constant over there. Let's do another one, and now we go the third derivative, one, two, three, like that, the third derivative, or uh, triple prime, 
And then we take the root of this is just a constant goes to zero. This one here all goes away, so we get a two times three times c three. And then plus, keep going on and on. It's be the same thing. This goes down. And then notice the pattern. Now we have an n minus two. Then we have a uh, n minus one over there. Then we have an n over there times by c n. Then x minus a, and then we get our n minus three over there. And again, same thing. We're going to plug in a inside this third derivative. This equals two. Yeah, this equals two. These all vanish. We just get a two times three times c three. Again, you need to set this equal to the third derivative, like this of the function that we're approximating. So now we just rearrange this, divide it out. So we get now is a c three, the third or the fourth constant, because c because um, zero is the first one. We get a f triple prime divided by two times three. Yeah, like that. It's two times three. And then, uh, yeah, that's our third constant, or fourth one. But now notice the pattern here. And again, even with the nth one, all we're doing is just add or just subtracting another constant and, and multiplying it by the previous one, which is one larger. So, all right, notice the pattern. So for the first constant, c0, this equals to, we'll go all the way up, 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 up above here, that's just f of uh, a. So that equals to f of a. But you can also write this as, well, f of 0 of a. This is basically not taking a derivative, put a 0 like that. Which you could also put it, now put it above like this of a, divided by, I'll just put this 1. And this one you can even write this as uh, over here, f of 0 a, and then uh, 0 prime. I mean, not zero. I'm zero factorial. And again, if you've seen my earlier video, put a note here. Note uh, zero factorial equals to one by definition. And you can oh, make sure to watch my earlier video on that. Basically, it means the multiplication of well, no numbers. <laughs> Let's put that as one over there. So now I'm just writing it like that because it's easier to find a pattern. Now for the second uh, constant, c1. This is going to be, uh, let's just scroll up to that one. C1 is f prime of a. So that just becomes f1 of a like that. And this one, you could also write it in that form like that. I'll write this as, yeah, I'll write this as instead of writing this prime, we'll put a 1 like that to the first derivative of a, and this will divide this out by 1 as well. And this is, again, the exact same thing as writing 1 factorial. So we have 1 of a, and then 1 factorial like that. And again, i.e., one factorial, just one times, uh, yeah, this is just one. That just equals to one, like that. So I'll just box this out, so that's the constant there, just to see the pattern. So all we're doing is adding one there. And you can keep doing this on and on. I'll show the second one, or the C2 constant, or the third constant. This is going to be, uh, as let's just scroll up what it was. Here, this is going to be f double prime of a divided by 2. So we're going to be dividing that by 2, like this, divided by 2. And now this one equals 2. We'll just write it like that form. This is going to be a put a 2 in there, the second derivative of a. Then we have a 2 times 1, like that. Same thing, because 2 times 1 is just 2. So this equals 2. Yeah, this just equals 2 now, f2, uh, two like that. A, and this is going to be, well, this is just our 2 factorial. And then even if we go further, we go to the C3, and then we have the C3 constant is over here. That is just going to be C3 is the f triple prime of a, and then divided by 2 times 3. In other words, we get a f triple prime of a divided by 2 times 3, or 1 times 2. It doesn't matter where you want to put it. This equals 2. Well, yeah, this is the same thing. I'll just put a 1 over here. One over there, you could remove it, doesn't really matter. So what we get, and, and also write this in the other form with the bracket three uh, signaling as a derivative, third derivative, same thing as that. And then we get a three prime, I mean a factorial. And notice <laughs> the exact pattern, it's always going to be like this. So we keep doing this, we can uh, keep adding more terms. All we're going to do is get 
adding another one the next one's gonna be the four and so on but now we're basically we got the pattern gone so we have I'll just write in general so in general we can write now ck equals to uh, the derivative the kth derivative at a of the function f we're trying to approximate divided by k prime like that and we can just circle that and again where the k prime this is a factorial this just equals to 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 and then we can keep going dot 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 all the way to times it by k over there so that's what it is so now just put it all together now that we have all the constants so thus we have so thus our Taylor polynomial t n of x is equal to well f of um, yeah, f of a is going to be f of a, this is just the zeroth derivative or the non-derivative, divided by zero factorial is just, well, one. And then plus, again, the second thing is going to be the derivative here. And then uh, it's going to be the exact same thing, because remember, this is just f prime of a. This one is f of a like that. Those are just the first two constants, but this one has an x minus a like that. And then plus... And also further, this one could be viewed as just an uh, x minus a to the power of 1. This one here could be a x minus a power of 0, like that, just for... Uh, so then that just equals to 1. So everything lines up perfectly fine. Yeah, so going further, then we have a f double prime. Yeah, I'll put this over here. So f double prime of a divided by 2 factorial, which is just still just 2. And then x minus a power of 2 plus keep going on and on all the way to the nth one so we get a f of n the nth derivative like this and then this is going to be of a divided by n factorial then we have an x minus a n like that over there Let's just put this like this and there that is what we have and I'm going to circle this whole thing like that. And uh, yeah, that is what our nth degree polynomial is. So this is what, what it's called as written above. Let's write this down as well to get this fully ingrained in our brain. So nth degree Taylor, so that's, the, that's why you put the n there. Taylor polynomial, polynomial. Yeah, the Taylor polynomial of f, the function f, centered, centered at a, like that. So uh, yeah, it's a mouthful, but that is <laughs> what we have over there. I might go later video to see the history behind why it's called Taylor, founder, and uh, other stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, let me know if I should. Anyways, that is all for today. I hope you follow along this uh, pretty interesting derivation and just going through the pattern of it. And then it's a very, very uh, unique approximation right here. And then basically the more and more you go, as you go to n infinity, I believe, yeah, that, that pretty much approximates it uh, perfectly. Yeah, or something like that. I'll uh, uh, go further into it. Just follow the, follow the parts. So yeah, that is all for today. If you follow along this question five, deriving Taylor polynomials. And uh, yeah, like always, you can download these exact notes in the link in the description below, as well as viewing these notes on Steemit and uh, in article format I'll be uploading that there shortly and also and also like always make sure to always uh, check out my math forums and post any cool math or science related stuff you find anyways it's all for today thanks for watching and stay tuned for another math easy solo